Hi all. So welcome to this channel AS400 and SQL Tricks. And in this video session, I'll discuss calling SQL stored procedure from a SQL trigger. So without wasting any time, uh, we would move towards the demo. So I have created one trigger program and one uh, procedure, SQL procedure, which gets called from that trigger. So let's see how I did this. So this was the trigger program which I written. So here you can see the syntax like create or replace trigger is used to create a trigger program. And uh, replace is used just because if it exists already, if this trigger program exists already, that will be replaced. So this uh, is the name of the trigger program called proc from trigger. After and this trigger is applied on after insert or delete or update so basically it's a multiple event trigger because it is applied on multiple events like trigger uh, insert delete or update now in update you can see uh, off clause is used which is basically uh, for any particular column so update trigger will be activated only when this column of this table is changed now so you can see this uh, trigger is applied on this table and that's an after trigger. So there are a few important points which you must uh, uh, remember while uh, calling a skill store procedure from a trigger program. So the first thing is um, in the before trigger, in the before trigger you can pass, uh, you have the both, you have both old and new values in before trigger. So uh, you can pass those new values directly to the skill stored, pro skill stored procedure as a parameter. But if you are applying an after trigger, you cannot pass either the old or the new values as a parameter to the SQL stored procedure which gets called from this trigger program like this. So what's the alternative for that then? So we need some local variables defined in the triggers. And we will be basically moving those new or old values which you want to uh, pass or as a parameter to the SQL procedure. So procedure. So we'll define those local variables and move the new or old values to the local variables, and then we will passing the local variables as a um, parameter to the SQL stored procedure. So here you can see this is an after insert or delete or update multiple event trigger applied on. Ah, applied time is after trick activation time is after on table this and with update this column will, would be checked if this is updated then only the trigger gets activated referencing new row as new and old row as old so basically we are referencing the old and new rows here uh, uh, which is uh, uh, old is old and new are the correlations used here to reference a particular value of old row or new row so old row is available when uh, uh, delete or update is happened and a new row is available when uh, update or insert is happened. So in insert only new is available, new row is available and in update both are available, in delete only old is available. So this for each row, this uh, row, this is a row level trigger so it, this applies to the each row because we have used the mode db2 row and for each row now here one important thing is program name trigger 9 so the trigger program name is called proc from trigger but here we can specify what actual system name has to be created for this program trigger program so the trigger 9 so basically if we do not have provide this program name here what happened the system would have created the SQL trigger program with its um, with a unique name so we don't have that uh, control over the name of the trigger program now we have a control over the name of the trigger program that is trigger 9 so this is the trigger program which gets called and its object would be created with this name but when we see in the uh, DSP FD of any file to which this trigger like the rgpf 4 to which this trigger is associated we will see this trigger program gets filed so the object would which exist with this name now 
we are declaring those local variables uh, roll number name college and this is a flag so flag is just for insert update or delete because we are calling a base school procedure based upon insert update or delete and we are then the stored procedure sql stored procedure is driven upon those flags only so if inserting so this is a predicate if inserting then flag is set to i and in insert we have a new row available so row number name and college so new dot roll number new dot name new dot college is set to l underscore roll number so uh, name and college uh, the local variables then we are calling the stored procedure sql stored procedure sql tr proc1 and passing all these parameters and this is the end if so if deleting then passing flag is d and passing the old values old dot roll number old dot name old dot college and calling the same procedure and if if a, we can call the different procedure in itself and then in update we are checking if flag uh, we are checking if new value is not equal to old value then set the flag to u and passing the row number as old row number and name as new because we are updating the name so here we are passing the name not the old row number and old college and then ca calling the stored procedure with the same parameters so basically here the difference is as we can notice here insert we are passing the new name to the local variables and here the old values in deleting as earlier what i said earlier and here in roll number and college the old name so uh, we are supposing that the user will only update the new name that is the name so we are basically passing the new dot name here so the new row and the old row both are uh, available in the update uh, trigger so we are passing the new name here and we are calling this skill stored procedure so this is the end of the trigger program now that sql procedure just move toward that so create or replace procedure again sql tr proc1 so we can here specify the long name as well but because we use the specific name as sql tr proc but for now i'm keeping both the names are same these are the input parameters p underscore roll number name college flag which we are passing from the trigger call then it's begin so if p underscore flag goes to i then insert into this file trgpf5 since we are applying the trigger on file trgpf4 and we are inserting deleting or updating recall from the trgpf5 file once uh, that trigger gets activated on trgpf4 so if insert flag is i we are inserting the records if flag is d we are deleting the records based upon the uh, parameters which we get here and if it is u then we are updating the records so that's all in this uh, procedure so now uh, the time to create the procedure and trigger run sql stm sql tr proc so this is the sql trigger source file sql tr proc 1 star none just set the debug view as a star source so we can see the stored procedure sql stored procedure gets created sql tr proc 1 so the program type object gets created now let's create the trigger so the same command is used here so here comes the trigger 9 and we will debug this work object trigger 9 so you can see the trigger program gets created with the object name trigger 9 and if we do the gspfd on that file
टीआरजी पीएफ फोर सो वी कैन सी द ट्रिगर नेम गेट्स एसोसिएटेड विद दिस इज कॉल प्रॉक फ्रॉम ट्रिगर बट द ऑब्जेक्ट गेट्स क्रिएटेड विद ट्रिगर नाइन दिस इज एन आफ्टर ट्रिगर इंसर्ट यस सो ऑल द ट्रिगर्स आर एप्लीकेबल टू दिस डिलीट ट्रिगर अपडेट ट्रिगर सो ऑल द ट्रिगर्स आर देयर नाउ लेट्स डिबक दिस trigger program now let's just what we do insert into trgp of 4 so one first thing we'll do we'll insert one record name one college one so we can see the record gets inserted since it's after trigger so everything happens after the record gets inserted so let's see this file trgpf5 is blank now since they are not initialized so they are default null so if inserting so this time we are inserting so flag is set to i roll number is set to new dot roll number which we are providing one name is set to new dot name name one college is set to new dot college so college one and here we are calling that sql procedure with those parameters let's debug this sql procedure as well so just press either you can press shift f10 multiple times so that it went there or i think is you can directly set the breakpoint there just press shift f10 first so after pressing multiple times shift f10 we are here now you can see what we receive raw number as this one name as this college name as this and this is the flag just do shift f7 shift f8 if flag is i so we are basically inserting the records and here it's out it's out this is not delete case see see so this record gets inserted into trgp5 as well now let's uh, update the record update so if we update anything else this won't get activated and if we update something like uh, let's say i'm updating the name to name 1 so the name 1 was already there okay we are updating the name on trgpf5 or oh, we need to update this on trgpf4 because the trigger is up there on trgpf4 so let's say if deleting if updating so if updating is applicable here new dot name is equals to old dot name so they are same they are not changed actually the name is not changed but they are updated so this time that the procedure won't get fired so because we have applied a condition not equals to this one condition now if we change something else let's see name change so now you can see new dot name is not equal to old dot name the update put set the update flag and roll number as the old one and new name as name change then we'll call this stored procedure just to 
um, shift F2 here so we can directly put it the breakpoint at line number one or we can directly put a breakpoint at this point as well just two F12 so you are in the SQL sort procedure so this is the another way flag is you this time and we are updating the file so just check if this gets updated in trigger 5 as well so you uh, trgpf 5 as well so this is updated in both the files so you can see how you can update insert to delete a rows in another file or you can activate some event or you can call a stored procedure um, once you you are uh, ac actually inserting updating or deleting a file uh, record in one file and then you are firing the SQL stored procedure on each event and they are actually inserting deleting or updating the record in another file based upon the things which are changed in file one so this way we can maintain the concurrency in the table so so that's all in this video so you learn how you can uh, call a stored procedure so uh, in the trigger program so that's all thank you and have a nice time